we will allow the others to make a remark or two. And we'll shall be outgoing. Secretary. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs. Ladies and gentlemen, as the Secretary just said, today we have watched the tragedy of an outrageous act of barbaric terrorism carried out by fanatics against both civilians and military people. Acts that have killed and maimed many innocent and decent citizens of our country. I extend my condolences to the entire Department of Defense families, military and civilian, and to the families of all those throughout our nation who lost loved ones. I think this is indeed a reminder of the, tragic, the tragedy and the tragic dangers that we face day in and day out, both here at home as well as abroad. I would tell you up front, I have no intentions of discussing today what comes next, but make no mistake about it, your armed forces are ready. We, we don't discuss intelligence matters. I see, and, how, and how, how would you respond if you find out who did this? The, uh, obviously, the President of the United States has spoken on that subject, and those are issues that he will address in good time. Mr. Yes. Secretary, we are getting reports uh, from CNN and others that there are bombs exploding in Kabul, Afghanistan. Are we at the moment striking back, and if so, is the target Osama bin Laden and his organization? I've seen those reports. Uh, they, in no way is the United States government connected to those explosions. What about Osama bin Laden? Do you suspect him as the prime suspect in this? Uh, it's, it's, it's not the time for discussions like that. Mr. Secretary, you said you could not be specific about casualties. Can you give us some characterization of whether it's dozens or <coughs> hundreds in the, in the building? Well, we know there were large number, many dozens, in the aircraft that flew at full power, uh, steering directly into the, between, I think, the first and second floor of the uh, uh, opposite the helipad. Uh, you've seen it. Uh, it there, there cannot be any survivors. It, it just would be beyond comprehension. The, um, there are a number of people that they've uh, not identified by name, but identified as being uh, dead. And uh, there are a number of casualties. But uh, we're, the FBI has secured the site and the um, information takes time to come. People have been uh, lifted out and taken away in ambulances, and uh, the, the numbers will be calculated, and it will not be a few. Mr. Secretary, Secretary, could you tell us what you saw? Mr. Secretary, do you consider what happened today? We're, right here. Right. We're looking also at a picture while we listen to the Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld of helicopters no that we believe uh, are returning to the White House from Andrews Air Force Base. Uh, Marine uh, One uh, is the helicopter that has the President on board and lands on the south lawn of the White House, which is the routine procedure when the President returns uh, to the White House from Andrews Air Force Base. These are helicopters that we're now seeing approaching the south lawn of the White House. Uh, that's a picture of downtown Washington that you're seeing right now. President uh, Bush just landing uh, only a few minutes ago at Andrews Air Force Base, returning to the White House, getting ready to address the nation around 9 p.m. Eastern tonight. Once again, Marine Corps helicopters uh, that we believe are one of them carrying the president and his party returning to the south lawn of the White House. There are six helicopters there all together, uh, six Marine Corps helicopters. The people who work in this building, they do so voluntarily. They're brave people, and they do their jobs well. Mr. Secretary, can you give a sense of what happened? What did you see when you left your office, ran down to the site, and help people on stretchers and then return to the command center. The, uh, I felt the, the shock of the uh, airplane hitting the building, uh, went through the building and then out into the area and they were bringing uh, bodies out that had been injured, um, most of which were alive and moving but uh, seriously injured. And uh, a lot of volunteers were uh, doing a terrific job helping to bring them out of the buildings and get them into stretchers and into ambulances and into airlifts. The Secretary, can you, tell, can you tell us how many of the dead were soldiers and how many were civilians? Have you been able to determine Absolutely that? Absolutely not. 
Mr. Yes. Mr. Secretary, today we saw military planes both in New York and in Washington. How much more of a military presence will we see now that this incident has occurred for the next week? Um, those kinds of decisions are made day to day. It is correct that we had aircraft flying uh, protective missions uh, at various places in the United States today, and uh, they will do that as appropriate. Mr. Mr. Secretary, Secretary, what do you, you say to the American people who may have questions on how something so coordinated has been carried out against this nation? What do you say to them who might not have confidence that our intelligence and our security are what they should be? Uh, I say to them that the President of the United States will be making uh, some remarks to them this evening that will address those subjects. Mr. Secretary, you, you've declared, uh, the Pentagon has declared threat con delta forces around the world. Uh, could you tell me why? Have you, have you received any threats or has anyone claimed credit for this? Um, we, we have, in fact, uh, declared uh, force protection condition delta and a condition of high alert, indeed the highest alert, uh, we did so almost immediately upon the attacks, and um, it is still in force. Mr. Secretary, were there threats issue, excuse me, issued against other U.S. facilities in, elsewhere in the world today? The, um, I, I don't know that there's a day that's gone by uh, since I've been in this job that there haven't been threats somewhere in the world to some facility somewhere. It's a, uh, it's one of the uh, complexities of the intelligence business that you have to um, sort through those kinds of things. Um, but uh, uh, we don't get into the specifics. Yes. You raise your hand. Yes. So, let me just say, rumors earlier in the day. Let me interrupt uh, the Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld to report uh, that this is, uh, we believe, Marine One, the President's helicopter, now landing on the south lawn of the White House, which is the usual procedure, bringing President Bush back to uh, the White House from Andrews Air Force Base. The president began this day in Sarasota, Florida, where he was going to be promoting his agenda on education, then flew to Louisiana, then flew to Nebraska, and finally, when uh, the Secret Service and U.S. law enforcement thought it was safe, uh, now bringing him back to the White House, uh, where later this evening he will be addressing the nation. Air Force One about to touch down on the south lawn of the White House. So John King, our senior White House, correspondent is standing by. Uh, John, uh, what do you have over there? Wolf, as you watch Marine One land here on the South Lawn, we have just been allowed back into the White House. We were evacuated as well earlier today. First, let me read you a statement from the president. This during his travels back to Washington, the president telling his National Security Council, quote, we will find these people and they will suffer the consequences of taking on this nation. We will do what it takes. No one is going to diminish the spirit of this country. Now, the president will return to the White House. One of our cameramen, Mike Vanigan, also just a short time ago shot pictures of Laura Bush coming back to the White House in her motorcade. We do not know where she was being kept in a secure location at this time, but the First Lady is also back in the White House. Also, after Secretary Rumsfeld finishes his briefing at the Pentagon, a number of Bush administration cabinet officials will brief here at the White House to bring us up to date on the activities of their agencies. One, we're told, the Health and Human Service Secretary, Tommy Thompson, who is involved, of course, in the medical help, blood banking and others. He will bring us up to date on his agency. Attorney General John Ashcroft, also on his way to the White House as well, we are told. All of this leading up, all these briefings from administration cabinet members leading up to a nationally televised address from the president tonight to the American people from the Oval Office. You see there Marine One sitting on the south lawn of the White House, a virtual ghost town throughout much of the day as it was evacuated. The president now back in Washington and at the White House. Wolf. John, uh, the trips to Louisiana and Nebraska that the president took today, that, that was designed, we're told, and we see a Marine officer uh, uh, walking off Marine One as the president we expect uh, to emerge from Marine One any second now. Uh, we assume that was because uh, security personnel thought it was too dangerous for the president to come right back to Washington. Is that right? The first stop at Barksdale in Louisiana was designed so the president could get to a command and control center that is fortified and structured so that he could be in contact. You see the president there emerging from Marine One, saluting his Marine escort on the south lawn of the White House. The direction he turned, it appears he is heading straight into the Oval Office. Had he gone straight, that is the path into the White House residence. The president turning left indicating he will go straight into the, his office, the Oval Office, the president saying nothing as he walks by there. 
The first stop was to get him to a command and control facility so that he could have secure conversations with the vice president who was here at the White House and with the National Security Council. At that point, we had been led to believe by some sources the president would come directly back to Washington. Then they took him to the headquarters of the Strategic Air Command for another briefing with the National Security Council amid some concerns that they wanted to run a few more security checks before bringing the president back to Washington. Obviously, one of the heinous acts we saw today on the Pentagon just a few miles away, so an enormous amount of security concerns. Even as we speak here on the grounds of the White House, you see the president here heading up into the path, being greeted by more agents and his senior staff into the Oval Office. We'll this country in so many ways. Now, according to the press pool, Air Force One is headed back for the nation's capital. The president will, will be returning to Washington, D.C. It is important that business go on as best it can from our institutions of governance so that terrorists don't have the impression that they're putting this government on the run in some fashion. Amy Baker was in the World Trade Center when uh, Bakehurst. Amy, are you Amy. there? Yes, I'm right here. It's Dakers. Da Hello? Tell me your last name. Dakers, like Bakers, but D. You know, but I don't want to get too much closer, because the more buildings could come down, then we're not going to help anybody. All right. I think we should... Yeah. Where's the incident come that's out? Just, yeah, oxygen. yeah okay. Packs. Let's just wait right here. <laughs> let's just station up right here, okay? All right, Doc. Why don't we set up? Can you hang IVs from this pole here? Okay. Okay. Yeah. We just heard another explosion. They're handing out gloves and masks. The consensus is it's too unsafe to go in there. Just gonna wait here until they bring some people out. Hooked up with some firemen with some first aid stuff. What do we do? You know what? Anything? Why don't we just set this up as a little mobile hospital unit right here, okay? okay. <laughs> Told me just to wait here. Semi station here. See if I can help. See, that's what I'm doing. They won't let me go any closer. No one co can go in to get the people out. There's small explosions still going on. So far, I've seen some people who needed oxygen from the dust. No point trauma. Gonna go wash my eyes out. 